We're gonna tell you how to make your very own cauldron. We're gonna do so with Ed Sordiff. He's the green thumb guru and also the donor of these. <laughs> 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 the horns. These are Renaissance Fair horns. Yeah, they're all handcrafted and they are available for everybody if you go to a Renaissance Fair. <laughs> there we go. But we're going to use them today to make a cauldron. <laughs> well, we're not going to use them, are we? No, we're just going to wear them while okay. we make the cauldron. <laughs> I kind of want a pair. They're really fun. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and and you could use them for so many fair. different holidays. Yeah. So, w what are we going to make first? We're doing a cauldron with a full on bat in it. Yeah, um, well, this is like your last minute thing. You didn't yeah. get to go shopping. You didn't get, don't have any decorations. So what you're gonna do is things that are around the house. So you're gonna use your garden shed, uh, look for some pots that you have. You're gonna hangers in the house for the bats. So here's what we would do for the cauldron. If you look down there, I have just a big old uh, ceramic pot. You can see there's actually um, some mist rising out. That's for a water feature. It's like an atomizer, just vibrates the molecules of water and it uh, really? makes that steam that's really just a vapor. Um, so if you don't have something like that, you could, um, and all I did there was find a pot like this one. How to do. Look at that oh, go. Oh, <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, and so then all I did was that was put a, um, a big stainless steel tub inside to reflect the light up and reflect them um, and hold water in there. So you can do it with any size pot. Here's another pot I have. And just a mixing bowl. Yeah, and a mixing bowl, and I plop that right in there. And then I would just fill it with water. And then what you can do to add movement to the water, you can, um, if you want to plug one of these in, I have an aerator in here and an, um, a, it's right there, right near the. Uh, okay. Yeah. I have two different things in here. And one's an aerator. So here we go. Here's one. Yeah, I don't know what you're plugging in. Me neither. An, <laughs> an aerator and a, a fountain pump. Okay, let's try both. There. One will this, work. This isn't going to work though, because this has to be plugged into something. Oh, okay. Oh. So now you've got. Okay, now you've got the um, regular pond pump going, so it looked like the water was boiling. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and then the other one would have done the same thing. We just didn't have it plugged in. Now, if you want to add a color to that, you can oh, just add neat. some. What color would you like to add? It's just food coloring. I think we need to go red for blood. Okay, red. <laughs> so we'll just add a bunch of red, and then we'll just keep adding it. And so they would look, if you didn't have any lighting inside of it, it would just, um, you'd put it under a lighting and then you would see this thing boiling like that. That's cool. And so that would be a quick um, little filler for the pot. So what would you need to buy if you wanted to, Well, if I you, mean, if you don't have a, what is it, a pond pump? Yeah, a pond pump is just a recirculating pump. Or if you have a tabletop fountain at home, there's little pumps in there. You could just take that out and use that too. Um, and the other thing is an aerator. If you have a koi pond or fish at home, you probably have an aerator in it. Take it out for the weekend. The fish will be all right. It's going to be a cool weekend. And then you would just put that in the bottom of there and it would bubble up. Um, it's too bad we didn't have that going. We can show that later, I guess. Well, for, yeah, we'll fix it later in two because we're yeah. going to come back a little bit later. Yep. Anything else from a gardening perspective we should know come Halloween? For Halloween? Um, uh, for gardening. Um, well, obviously our pumpkins. <laughs> obviously oh, the pumpkins. Okay. Well, yeah, you harvested your pumpkins. You don't want to let them freeze. Mm -hmm. We haven't any freezes yet, so that's good. So if you're going to have a freeze, either take them in at night to make them last all the way through uh, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. or cover your pumpkins. You've heard of that. Cover your pumpkins. Right. <laughs> so we made the cauldron. Later in the show, we're going to make a bat. Tell well, us we're going to make a that. bunch of bats, and the bats will actually be able to be suspended above the cauldron, so they're coming out of the cauldron. So just from simple things like weed block that we found in the garden shed, coat hangers from your closet, and just some glue and stuff. We're going to make some uh, bats, hang them from some fishing line, and then you can use them all over for decorating. This is if you didn't get to go anywhere, you're stuck in the cabin and you want your uh, Halloween. Very you're cool. like the green thumb gardening decorating guru now. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I like it. That's really cool. So go into your garden shed and uh, pull out some Halloween decorations you never knew you had. In the meantime. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> We're back with Ed Sword. If he's the green thumb guru, we're also back with our horns on from Renaissance fairs. <laughs> no, they're Halloween costumes, okay? They're the Halloween, Halloween costumes. Yeah, my okay. Halloween costume. That's, uh, <laughs> All right, now we're, we're gonna making make bats. bats. Yeah, because we're going to have the cauldron. Um, also, if you have a cauldron and you want to get rid of the cord that comes out, if you can't put it through the bottom where the drainage hole is, just get a piece of moss and you can put that right around the edge and that'll hide the cords too. Great Good idea. idea. Yeah. And I also got the aerator working so you can see it's <laughs> bubbling up. There so it, it looks is. like it's boiling too. Um, now for the bats. Um, simple bat, all you're going to need is um, newspaper, coat hanger, glue, scissors, and a black fabric. This is actually weed block and I guess the cat got on it. I see a lot of cat fur. <laughs> you know, so. I'm so glad that that happened. So that if I, you know, 
I'm not the only one that has <laughs> animal hair in my things. Yeah. I've always been looking for a uh, a reason or something to do with these pesky wire hangers. Yeah, they, and they multiply. So here's a great thing: you're going to make a flock of bats. I don't know if it is a flock, but it's a bunch of bats. It's yeah. a, we'll call it a flock. A bunch of bats. I think is the scientific. Oh yeah, that, that must it's be a bunch of bats. <laughs> like yeah. a murder of crows. Exactly. <laughs> so now you're going to take a piece of paper. And all you do is take your hanger and you're going to put it on top of the paper. What I did was actually um, clip the hanger at the bottom to give me a little more freedom. I bent the top a little because this is going to be the skeletal structure of the bat. And so then all I did was put it down on the paper and then I um, traced it with a uh, magic marker. What I thought would be a bat look. And okay. a bat is mostly uh, pointy. Um, I'll show you what the pattern I came up with. Actually, if you do a half thing, once you get the size of the hanger on there, you can have a symmetrical bat. Um, I'm going to probably cover you up for a second. I don't know if they can see You're the... You're a great artist. Yeah. That's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's the bat. And then all you do is cut the bat out, which I did here. Okay. And you can see it has basically little points, little two points at the top of the wings, pointy ears, a little body, and some pointy um, bottoms of the wings. And that makes it kind of look like a bat. So then you put that on top of your weed block, which I did multiple layers, so I folded it over so when I cut one bat, Oh, you save yourself the time yeah. you have to cut them all out. And this is actually what the did I show what the end bat looks like? No. So this I is what <laughs> this is what the end bat looks like, and he's um, has the wires in it. So this is um, the there's like four pieces of, of weed block there. So then all you have to do is with your hanger, you're going to actually just place it on here. I would actually tape it to the bat, okay. so it's all the way inside of all this area. Tape it down. And then you're going to take the other sheet, because you have multiple sheets here, mm -hmm. and you would just glue it with your fabric tack or Elmer's glue. Go, just like make so. a yeah, make a border all the way around. Here, why don't we put it down on the table and do it? Oh, okay. A oh, liquid stitch. Yeah, a liquid stitch. Wow. <laughs> so the newspaper, this is only for a template to use on the weed block. Yeah, because we're recycling. We're just doing things that yeah. came from around the house. And newspapers are really big, you know, can make a really big pattern. I mean, with this, you right. could even open up that hanger more and make a huge bat if you really wanted to. Now, oh. if people are Keeping count at home, our producer just informed us a colony of bats. Oh, there you go. What happens when you have not many a flock bats. or a bunch? <laughs> no. So <laughs> okay, a colony we're of bats. <laughs> so okay, so it's it's a colony, and we're going to be making a colony. So then all you got to do is um, take your uh, liquid uh, glue or fabric tack, and I just actually make a quick line all the way around. This is well. I mean, aside from bending the hanger, which an adult should do, a fun thing to do with your kids, especially if you're using yeah. an Elmer's glue. I'll get this side for you, Ed. Okay, great. Not that you can't reach, but no. you know, <laughs> you need a break. You're, you're working yeah. hard here. So then, once you make these bats, the cool thing is you have them as decorations. Yeah, and so for once years and years. Yeah, you do, and it's actually something cool that you guys made. And like my bat's not the best bat in the world, but remember, it's just a silhouette. <laughs> And it's going to be hanging up. I think it's pretty good. <laughs> I, I, I was really impressed when really? you came in and showed us those bats today. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm much happier now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so how would you recommend displaying it? Yeah, so then all you have to do, remember we have a hanger in here. So, oh, I'll let you hang on to it. So all I would do is um, I would poke a hole through it and I would take uh, fishing wire or, or microfilament, I think they call it. And you can hang it like this from the top. Like and it would, ornament. Yeah, and then you would actually suspend them from the ceiling to over your cauldron. You can also hang them from the wings like this and they look like they're going right or left oh. because I'm actually oh. hitting the, um, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> and then also you can actually go and hang them upside down on the ceiling like they would be roosting. Sleeping bats. Yeah, oh. so then you could have a ton of bats on your porch when people come to your batty cauldron. <laughs> Very cool. And by the way, if people missed the cauldron earlier, it's going to be on our website, all the steps, how to do that. Ed? I hope I see some bats when I go trick-or-treating with my kids. Yeah. I'm going to say, you watch Mass Appeal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's just enough time, so you have enough time to do it. Can we make yeah, one more bat? Yeah. yeah, let's make, Can we one, make one more. Let's make another bat. You want to make, okay. Let's keep, let's keep making bats. Keep making bats. All you need to do, once again, to get the cauldron or the bats, mymassappeal.com later today.